commanding officer here in New York for the 501st Legion's Empire City Garrison. The 501st Legion is an international uh, stormtrooper, Darth Vader, bad guy, Star Wars character group that dresses up in bad guy Star Wars costumes and does good in the community. Uh, we're not only about um, uh, building the costumes, we're also about, about using those costumes for good within the community. So basically our mission statement is that we help, we're troopers helping troopers, uh, individuals helping other individuals get their costumes up to snuff, up to a certain standard that's right out of the movie. Uh, in order to join, you have to have a movie accurate uh, Stormtrooper costume, Darth Vader costume, any character that's a bad guy character from the movie basically qualifies as a 501st Legion costume. Uh, we have about 15,000 people all around the world that do this, and the Empire City Garrison is the New York chapter of this organization. We have about 70 members around New York. Uh, we serve uh, New York City, Long Island, and the Hudson Valley. Uh, I personally have been doing this for 16 years. The organization's been around for 26, and our garrison is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, uh, and over 2,500 events over those 25 years. So that's an incredible, um, uh, accomplishment uh, that we've done within the community. Uh, some of the things that we do on a regular basis, we do libraries, we do children's hospitals, uh, we do presentations for the Make-A-Wish Foundation when uh, a, a, a kid who wants to get something from the Make-A-Wish Foundation is pr presented with a trip to Disney World or something like that, they'll call us in if they're Star Wars fans and have us presented to them. Uh, we do do um, uh, things uh, like parades. Uh, two years ago, we got to do the Thanksgiving Day Parade, which was a huge thrill for us. Uh, being a New Yorker all my life, it was an incredible experience to be asked, and an honor to be asked to be in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, we got to do that uh, two years ago, and it was a, a thrill of a lifetime. Uh, we also occasionally get asked to do stuff for Lucasfilm. Uh, because they know that we're movie accurate, uh, we know how to behave, we do this pretty much every weekend. I do anywhere from 40 to 50 events a year. They know they can rely on us, that we're reliable, that we have good costumes, that we can behave in an appropriate manner uh, at the different events. They ask us to do a variety of events, from Good Morning America, uh, to various promotional events, um, to just about anything you can think of. Uh, one funny story I have is we got asked to do something two or three years ago, and it was super top secret. They didn't tell us what it was. They just said that it was going to be at a clothing store in Manhattan, and Lucasfilm had requested a couple of stormtroopers there. Well, we get there, and they're telling us that there's going to be uh, reporters there, there's going to be models there, there's going to be all this stuff, and then they hit us with that Mark Hamill is going to be there. So that was like the thrill of a lifetime. We go to this event that we think is just going to be some promotional event, and one of the actors from the movie is there. So it, it can be very exciting, but that's not why we do it. What we really do this for is for the camaraderie. We have men and women in this organization who I've become very close with over the years that I consider like my brothers and sisters. And we all get together and help each other with our costumes, making sure they're up to snuff, making sure they're movie accurate, making sure that uh, we can point out where you can get certain parts. And we all try to help each other achieve that level. And what I always say is, if you've spent all that time, money, and effort building <coughs> something like this, do you want to just use it at a convention once a year or twice a year? Do you want to just use it on Halloween? We almost feel like it's, it's kind of like the, the line from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. When you have something this cool, you really want to use it for something positive. And luckily within the group, our mantra is to, to, to use them for good within the community. Uh, so for the past 26 years, we've been doing all of that, any event that's a community event, a nonprofit event, children's hospital visit, anything like that is something that's right within our mission statement. So if you know of any organizations in your community that could use us uh, to help get a little more excitement for the organization, we're at their disposal, and you can check us out at 501ecg.com. Just on that same note, one of the things I want to mention is that the children's hospitals, for me, and this is Ron Lars, and this is his incredible Darth Vader costume, one of the ones that's the most precious to us is the children's hospitals. We have children of our own, and to go to a children's hospital and put a smile on a, a child's face that's going through a really rough time is, is really a transformative experience. Uh, we do them as often as we can. We're actually doing Cohen's uh, Children's Hospital on May the 3rd, and it's an incredible experience. It, it, it can be kind of somber, a little sad, but when you see the, ch the children's faces light up, when you see them get the attention that you know, they really deserve in the situations that they're facing, it's really worth everything. It's worth everything that we do 
all the work we put in, it's really the payoff for everything that, that we're about. I don't want to just keep talking. If anybody has any questions or has any uh, you know, uh, things they want to ask me, feel free to ask us any questions. Um, like, if you took the suit apart, like, how, you, like, what is, like, how much, like, what is the material that you use the most in the suit? Absolutely. It varies from costume to costume. For Darth Vader, he has a lot of leather. He has some fiberglass parts that are painted. If you want to feel mine, I can give you one of the pieces here. You can see it's ABS plastic. It's kind of a flexible plastic. And there's about... So it's kind of like the plastic that's in Legos? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same type of plastic. And it, it's if for a Stormtrooper, it's got to be white. For a Shadow Trooper, Christina up here has a TIE Fighter. Her chest piece is black plastic, but it's the same type of plastic. And this is what they use in the movie because it's very malleable. You know, they take sheets of this plastic, they make a mold out of clay, and then they heat up the plastic, and then they vacuum form it. They suck all the air out and press the, the, the piece of hot plastic onto this form that's made out of clay. And it, it, when they suck all the air out, it's like magic. It takes this form. Then you just cut this out, and you put some straps on it to put on your hand, and that's how you make a hand plate. Every single one of these pieces was, was carved out of um, a piece of clay, made into a, a, this form with the little divots, and then they take a flat piece of plastic, heat it up, and suck it onto the, the thing, and suck all the air out until it takes that shape. And then you cut the pieces out, you glue them together with these strips, you put straps on so that all the pieces stay on your body, and that's a very complicated process, and it takes a long time. It can take you know up to two months to, to put together one of these stormtrooper costumes. What's the number? That th this was actually a hand plate from another member. My number is six seven four four. The person I had, I needed to get replacement hand plates, and one of the other members who had used these were used hand plates put his number so we remember that it's his hand plate. So a lot of times we'll mark them like the rest of my armor. I, I like will write my number so that we don't get confused because sometimes it's hard to tell my part from some other parts because the whole point is they're supposed to be identical. If you have two stormtroopers at a troop and you have your stuff laid out, you want to know which one's yours so that you, you don't get your parts confused. But there's various costumes. Christina's right here is a TIE pilot. Uh, her chest piece and her belt is made of ABS and the rest of it's just fabric pieces that they put together just like they would in the movie. Uh, as I said, Darth Vader's, uh, I don't know if that's plastic. No, that's aluminum. That's aluminum. This is fiberglass. That's aluminum. These are aluminum. Uh, those are aluminum. Fiberglass. Fiberglass. So it's various different Wasted materials. Wool for the ladies who know how heavy that is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just one thing, I mentioned that we are bad guys from the movie. We consider ourselves bad guys doing good. That's kind of our tagline. Because yes, we, we're the bad guys from the movie, but we use the iconic images from the movie and these characters to try to bring some smiles to the kids' faces and families' faces and to bring attention to various charities around the New York area. There's also, I'd like to mention, uh, another group uh, who operates the same way, basically the same way that we do, called the Rebel Legion that does the good guy costumes. So if you're interested in doing a uh, Princess Leia or a Jedi or a Luke Skywalker, the Rebel Legion are, are the good guys doing good. They're the uh, organization that was kind of an offshoot from the 501st Legion to handle the good guy costumes. And we partner a lot on various events. Some of us are dual members. I actually have uh, two or three boot costumes that I use with the Rebel Legion, like the X-Wing orange outfit that he wore and his black outfit from uh, Return of the Jedi. And I sometimes will switch up between the two costumes. Sometimes I'll go bad guy, sometimes I'll go good guy, depending on the situation. But thank you so much for the question. Anybody else How do you actually make sure That's, that's a very, very good question. Uh, if you check out 501st.com, every single costume that can be approved within the, within the 501st Legion is part of something called a uh, costume reference library. Every single costume has multiple pictures, close-up pictures of different areas, what the dimensions are, what the specs are, what parts you need. It has everything laid out. And we have a team within the Empire State Garrison. Each garrison has a team of people that when people submit their photos, we'll go through and check that all the specifications from that particular costume are met. So it's a stringent process. Uh, I like to say that some people get bent out of shape, like you're criticizing my costume, isn't this good enough? 
No, it's not good enough. It's got to be movie accurate up to a certain standard, and our judges will, will look at the photos and give feedback. And it's, it's constructive feedback. It's not meant to say your costume stinks. It's never going to be approved. No, it's, listen, your, your shoulder's a little off. You need to adjust it. You need to make sure this is lining up properly, so adjust your straps. It's constructive feedback to make you be the best you can be. And, and people who take it in the proper uh, way it's given will really succeed in the organization. There, there have been a few people that just, they'll send in their pictures, they'll get some criticism, and we'll, we never hear from them. And it's, it's disappointing, but you have to understand that we're, we're trying to reach a certain standard, and that's really what the group's about, is maintaining the standards so that whenever you ask for the Bible First Legion to come to your your organization's uh, charity event or fundraiser or community event, you're going to get something that looks like it's stepped right out of the movie. You're not going to get a uh, party city costume or something that's, that's been thrown together with foam or something. It's going to be an ABS plastic, shiny suit that's strapped up and looks very, very much like it just stepped out of the movie. We also do mentorship, too. We also do, uh, yes. yes. We also do mentorship, so. Yeah, in each of, in each, each of the costumes um, fall into different categories. Uh, Christina's costume here is a TIE Fighter pilot. She's part of the uh, Jolly Roger Squadron, uh, which is the detachment specifically for TIE Fighter pilots. So if she was looking for information, she could go to the Jolly Roger Squadron and ask questions. You know, where do I get these straps? Where can I get the patch for the, for the, for the uh, side of the, the, the suit? Um, you know, is my belt looking okay? You can do a lot of pre-work, and it's as much work as you put into it as you're going to get out of it. For the um, stormtroopers, it's the uh, uh, First Imperial Stormtrooper Detachment, also known as FISD or FISC, also known as WhiteArmor.net, and that's a website specifically. It's a detachment from the 501st that specifically focuses on that costume to give help. To troopers helping troopers to help you get every single piece that you need exactly the way you want it. And we encourage folks who, especially if you don't do that pre-research, before you submit your pictures, check out your detachment for your specific costume, and there's information about which detachments are for what costumes. Uh, and check out that if you have any questions, they're the resource. They're the experts that uh, have built multiple of these costumes and will know exactly how to help you. Uh, Ron's uh, Darth Vader is part of the Sith Lord detachment, and that covers any Sith Lords like the Emperor, Darth Vader, uh, any dark uh, dark Jedi uh, like uh, Darth Raven. No, he's, he's, oh, he's, he's Eclipse. Oh, he's a flagship Eclipse. See, there's, there's some little variations, but again, 501st.com is the best resource to find out where to get the information that you might be looking for. Go ahead. Do you have a lightsaber on him right now? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Uh, and we would usually have. Thank you very I don't much like Thank you, guys. I don't like carrying a bladed type saber because, if, especially in a situation like this where there's a lot of people, that's three feet, three and a half feet of plastic tubing, and I'm going to hit this kid in the head. <laughs> I already know it, you know? It's going to ha it's happened many times, so I very, very rarely carry a lit saber. And we usually would have our blasters. Where are you going, Stips? <laughs> <laughs> we, usually, we normally would have our blasters, but, you know, of course, since it's a school, we're not going to carry blasters. And the blasters are kind of scary, actually, because, uh, I don't know if you know this, but in the movie, they used old World War II actual guns, machine guns, and just stuck some parts on them to make them look like laser guns. So when you look at the blaster, you're like, wait a minute, that looks like a, a Sterling submachine gun. Well, yes, it was based on a Sterling submachine gun, and they added some windshield wiper things, and they added some tchotchkes on it, they added a scope on it, but it's basically an old, you know, uh, uh, decommissioned uh, machine gun from an old World War II movie. Because that's what they had laying around. That's when, when they were making it in Pinewood Studios in England, when they were making the original movie, the prop department would go and sca scavenge for anything they could find and try to make it into something that looked like it was out of this world. But a lot of the, a lot of the weapons in Star Wars are based on actual real life weapons. So we try to stay away from that whenever we're in this real type situation. What do you think this started life as? Photo flash from a camera. They just have a big, like, round disc on top of it to, to flash out. 
That's what that started. Yeah, like they used that. to have those flash bulbs that only mm -hmm. work once. You see them in old movies. You see the big guys holding yeah. the giant camera with the big disc on it. That was the part of that that would hold the batteries and and set off the little bulb and make it flash. So it's, it's exciting that you know we're still able in some cases to find those old flashes, those old um, flash handles, and make them into lightsabers. That one I think is a replica. It's but a replica. Yeah. They I, still I you, you can still hands. find them on eBay. They're called uh, Helsinger. No, not Helsinger. Uh, this this is a. a I can't think of the name. My brain is gone now. I know, but it's, it's, it's a flash from like right. the 30s and 40s that you yeah, can still find sometimes. There's three different ones that we use. But unfortunately, they're getting harder and harder to find because people know what they are now. People say, oh, that's, that's a lot. I can make that into a lightsaber. You get twice the money. That gets twice the money for it. Go ahead. Have you ever been in any movies where you were in we have it in New York, unfortunately. Yeah. We've been on TV many times at different, on different talk shows. I was on The View, Good Morning America. I was on a show with Michio Kaku called Sci-Fi Science, um, uh, Physics of the Impossible. Whenever it's something in New York, they'll ask us to come down, and if it's Star Wars related, we get to do it. Unfortunately, we don't get to do the movies, because usually they film the movies in California. However, the California garrison out there was in the Mandalorian and in the uh, Obi-Wan series. Uh, when they needed a, a gaggle of stormtroopers, a giant group, they didn't, they couldn't hire enough stunt people and make enough suits in a short enough amount of time. So they said, let's just reach out to the 501st and, and get a bunch of stormtroopers. So I don't know if you've seen The Mandalorian. Have you seen that show? Well, it's, it's a good show that's on Disney Plus, and there's a big scene where there's like 30 or 40 stormtroopers attacking The Mandalorian about more than half of them, about 80% of them, were members of the 501st who came with their own suits, and they said, okay guys, go at it and just pretend like you're having a giant battle. And so for them, it was a huge opportunity, a huge experience, and we're very happy for them that they got to, they got to actually participate. Also, in the movie, The Force Awakens, have you seen The Force Awakens? The, the, new, well, the newer movies, they had the slightly different stormtroopers. They call them First Order Stormtroopers. Uh, they did the same thing when they needed a bunch of stormtroopers and they needed some stunt people to be the stormtroopers. They had uh, reached out to the local garrisons out in that area and said, could you guys come down? You guys are familiar with wearing suits like this. You could do it for a long time. Could you guys come down? They didn't tell us the garrison that did this, uh, I think it was in England, yeah. didn't tell anybody that they were in the movie, they were under a non-disclosure agreement, they couldn't tell anybody for a year. So a year after they got to make the movie, they got to finally say, hey guys, me. <laughs> eight of us were, were our guys out here yeah. in the UK, so it was very exciting for us to hear about that as well. But no, we don't get to do it much in New York, but it would be a great opportunity, and, and whenever we get to do local news things and stuff, it's, it's great, great to be able to do that. Over there, over here. Hi. Yeah. Um, so, Darth Vader actually, I'm pretty sure you guys have stood behind us while we're performing the orchestra. Yeah. Do you have a plan to uh, replicate Darth Vader's breathing? Because I'm pretty sure I heard you right. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. He does. On his shoulder. Yeah. Darth Vader is a challenging costume because besides all the, all the the parts, it's also got the lights, the electronics, and to do it properly. You have on a loop, you have the breathing so that you, you, you're you acting the part at all times. Actual he turned it down for the... Uh, all I heard was him breathing the <laughs> uh, Speakers that actually turned my armor into the speaker. And an amplifier mounted, as you can see, she was playing with on my shoulder. And this is, it's a loop taken from, from the soundtrack, from the movie, that somebody spliced it together to... It's only like maybe 90 seconds or so, but it loops over and over and over again. So it goes out to like you know an hour and a half worth of uh, the breathing, and uh, yeah, it's actually taken from the movie. The sound originally though is somebody breathing through scuba gear. So, you have any questions? So like, uh, do you guys like for the stormtroopers, right? Do you dress up in like different stormtrooper gear, or like is it specifically just the white stormtroopers? Oh, you mean like Inferno Troopers and yeah. stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, there's various troopers. I actually also have the First Order Stone Trooper from the, uh, from the newer movies. Um, I also have a Shadow Trooper, which was from the games, the black, the, the same exact armor. It's almost identical, except it's in black. Christina also has that outfit, and Christina's a good example of somebody in our group who joined the group 
didn't have much experience putting together these kinds of kits. And we, we helped Christina get her parts together, find what parts she needed, uh, just, you know, get everything together. And, and that's what we're, you know, that's a big part of the organization. Besides the stuff we do in the community, it's troopers helping troopers. It's people helping other people get to that level that they can actually use them for good the And Earl, our off-duty Thai pilot there, he's working, he's got the pieces, and he's assembling the final things to get approved as an actual Thai pilot. And Earl's outfit is a perfect example. This is basically what they call a Thai reserve. In the movie, you saw people in just this outfit, just the, the basic jumpsuit without the helmet on and without the chest piece on. You can join in a costume like this, and we consider this a great entry-level costume. If you want to join and just hang out with the folks, you know, be able to help us because you're you're not you don't have a helmet on, so you can help guide us around and help take pictures and stuff. You can see a lot better than a <laughs> helmet on. Yeah. reserve for an see. officer, an unhelmeted character is a great way to get started. And these are uh, just to talk about cost level. These are very inexpensive. You can pick something like this up from there's a company called Wampleware that sells them for about three hundred dollars. Uh, the full full suit together between three and four hundred. Yeah, between three and four hundred. You got to get the gloves. gloves. You got to get the little uh, tools that go in the, in the side. You got to get the correct boots and the correct belt. Compire. The comp hair. There's a few elements to it, but this is a I'd say a sub six hundred dollar costume. You get into a stormtrooper, it's a little more of an investment. It's at least a thousand dollars. And really, to do it right and to have all the accessories and all the parts, like the premium parts, it's going to cost you about twelve hundred dollars. So it's not a cheap hobby. It's something that this is true that that you have to you know really work at. You really have to make the investment in. But I can tell you, doing this for 16 years, I now have like nine costumes with the 501st. I have three or four costumes with the Rebel Legion. It's something that that is a little bit of addict, addictive. You really see all the costumes that the other folks are making. You say, I gotta have that costume. You know, I really gotta, gotta get my keep going with that costume. I also have a biker scout. The biker scout's a little more mobile. You can actually bend down. You can actually get down to kids and hand them cards. I, I love using the biker scout for, for various events. I can actually drive around in my biker scout and just take off the helmet so I can go to like, a more challenging trip. We do a lot of polar plunges and walks. We're actually supposed to do a polar plunge next week. Um, it's much easier when the changing situation may not be as easy as here, just going in the classroom and changing. It's easier to just show up dressed and then just throw on the helmet, the backpack, and then you're ready to go. So I'll dress for the occasion, whatever is probably easier for that particular event. Go ahead. What's like the outdoor size costume? Well, uh, they vary in sizes. Uh, the average stormtrooper is a little under six foot. For like a Darth Vader, we, we ask that they be 6'2 to 6'3 at least, and possibly a little taller. We actually have in the Rebel Legion, we have a couple of Chewbacca's. Uh, Chewbacca's like 7'4". So yes, you have to be at least 7 feet. And there's, we, there's not a lot of people that are that tall, so those folks wear stilts. They actually wear painter stilts that painters would use to paint ceilings under the costume so that they can get that height and they can look like Chewbacca from the movie. But it varies in sizes. And, you know, it's all we take all types, all sizes. Yeah, Jawas are about that big. And, and as well, I even have a Jawa, and I'm a little tall for a Jawa, but it's a fun costume to use. And there were various size Jawas actually in the movie and in the, in the shows, so you can actually be just about any height to be a Jawa. And you have to be 18 years or old. <laughs> yes, but there is something called the Galactic Academy. If you'd like to get involved or improve your Halloween costume, you can check out the Galactic Academy, and that's for. Uh, uh, members who are under the age of 18 to, to get some tips on costume making for Star Wars type costumes, and you could you know make your own take your own make your own take on a certain Star Wars costume and try to elevate your Halloween costume. Uh, are you guys able to see that? It's not, <laughs> not, not very well. Very, no. very little. This one I actually have pretty good visibility. Actually, when kids are below me, I can't see yeah. below about my nose. My vision ends yeah. here. But you can cheat. Now, and I can't see anything below. You can kind of cheat and kind of look out the nose. Within the nose piece, there's like a, uh, like a, you can see there, there's just like a screening material. So I can kind of peek out, out the nose area and kind of see what's below me. Uh, with the uh, Biker Scout, I have no peripheral vision because it's like this. So I can only see like what's directly in front of me. But yes, yeah, so seeing stuff can be challenging. That's why it's good to have some folks around in, problem I don't have. in officers and, and uh, Thai reserves that can actually help guide us around. And look out for everybody and all that. that.
and we have folks like uh, Vicky. I'm going to shout out to Vicky right now, who's filming right now. Uh, Vicky is Ron's wife. We call her Mrs. Vader. She's been helping for the past 14 and a half years. 14 years, yeah. Doing this for us. We actually made her an honorary uh, friend of the Legion last year because of all the hard work that she does, taking photos of us, helping us change, helping us uh, you know, navigate around so we don't, we don't knock over somebody or something or ourselves. Uh, so Vicki, thank you again. Thank you for everything you do for the guys. Thank you. Do you have a question, Rosary? All right, so you guys said your costumes are very expensive. Yes. How much? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the you want to know what I told my <laughs> wife or what it really cost? <laughs> uh, an issue level Vader, and I'm far from an issue level. Uh, usually we run you around three to thirty-five hundred dollars in that range, three thousand to thirty-five hundred. I have over thirteen thousand invested in my Vader, and that's many years of various upgrades. Yes, it's and upgrading for me. Like this, I have four helmets. That's one of the reasons why it's so expensive. This is my this is my favorite helmet. I have a helmet that's slightly more uh, authentic because it was taken off of a stunt helmet. It was cast off from a stunt helmet. This one is a was taken off from a tour helmet. Slight differences, very very little, minor minor differences. Uh, this helmet is twelve hundred dollars, and it and it took me three years to get. Yeah, you have to sometimes you have to wait because my there's, 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 there's exclusive makers who make right. them. You got the honor wait list. Was fifteen hundred dollars. But I had it in three weeks. Uh, my uh, my previous two helmets that before that was six hundred and eight hundred. My entry level helmet was about six hundred dollars. Next one up was eight hundred dollars, and this one was twelve. And the next one was fifteen. But things like your shoulder armor, I have a set for each helmet because they have to be made to work with each other. This the shape of the curve here, also the colors that they're painted have to match in order to meet our standards. And the, the shoulder armor ranges from six to eight hundred dollars, depending upon the maker, and so on and so on. Like the, the shin guards, yeah, it heads, up. It heads up quick. Yeah, this is probably the cheapest piece right there. <laughs> that? just about three hundred dollars. Oh. Well, at least, at least five oh, that's my yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. probably the cheap. The leather suit that you see here, when I when I bought this suit, it was only around six hundred dollars. Uh, now to buy the same exact suit from the same maker is about fifteen hundred dollars because the price of leather has gone up so drastically. They also have jobs like outside yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> many, many of us are adults, and this yeah. is like something we do for fun and to give back to the community. Yeah. So yeah, the cape sets like this is close to a thousand for this cape set, and it takes three years to get one from this maker. I mean, it what, eggs up very quickly. What I like to say is, like, this is our golf. Yeah. I mean, there's people that go golfing and spend thousands of dollars on golf equipment right. and going to famous golf courses and things like that. This is our golf. This right. is this is what we've chosen to, you know, spend our money on, and and we really get a, 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 a tremendous amount of enjoyment out of it. Yeah. And it's taken 14 years to get me to this point. So. And there's and like you said about different costumes, yeah. there's wear and tear. This is actually oh, yeah. my fourth. Storm, standard regular stormtrooper. I had one back in uh, 2008 when I joined. I used it for two or three years, and it wasn't uber accurate to my satisfaction. So I bought a, a really, really super accurate one from a company in England called RS Props that makes really good parts. And I used that for about six or seven years and actually wore it out. It started getting cracks. It started, you know, just from using it every weekend. If you do 30, 40 events a year, yep. there's wear and tear on it, packing it up, suiting it up, putting it away. Things get cracked. Things get broken. You know, it's just inevitable. So this is this is my third suit. I'm actually working on a fourth suit as a replacement to this one because I always like to have a backup. Yeah. When the costume reaches its end of, end of its life and it gets beat up to a certain level, this one's starting to yellow slightly, and we have some whitener I can put on it to whiten it. You put it out in the sun and it makes it like bleach white again. But I always like to have one in the waiting in the wings for, for replacing it. One funny thing here is if you see there's a divot right here on my armor, oh, yeah. and that's a that's a battle scar. Uh, last year we had done a, a mini con in Merrick, mm -hmm. and there was these stairs that kind of went down weird. I went completely down the stairs, smashed in, and I, I credit the armor was actually protecting me, smashed into the handrail, and it actually left a divot in my armor here. So, you know, it gets beat up, it gets little marks, and you have to clean it up or replace parts or keep upkeep it to a certain level. 
little things like this are fine because in the movie they were a little beat up and a little um, are, uh, wear on and tear on the costume is normal. But it does reach a point where you, where you want a fresh, nice, shiny, brand new, what we call a TK. Tell me about Jordan. Oh yeah, one of, one of the most crazy experiences of my entire career in this organization is right before COVID in 2019, around Christmas time, a bunch of us in New York got an email and we thought, absolutely, this is a scam. It was uh, a, a man with a, with an unusual name who said, we want to uh, send you to Amman, Jordan for an all expense paid trip for the premiere of The Rise of Skywalker. Would, would you be interested in attending? And we're like, this has got to be a scam. This is, this is like, a, right, right, all expense. We contacted the 501st headquarters and they said, no, this is legitimate. Lucasfilm has approved this. The King of Jordan wants to pay for 10 stormtroopers to come to Jordan for the premiere. His son is going to be there and he wants us to escort him in and be there for the premiere. And they also want us to visit a children's hospital in Jordan and go to a mall in Jordan, all in the same day. So we're like, oh my God. So I submitted, and I neglected to tell my wife or my family that I had done this. <laughs> and about a week later, I got selected. I was one of the five people in New York, and they picked five people from Florida to go to Amman, Jordan, which is like halfway across the world. It's an Arab country. And it was going to be the week before Christmas. So I tell my wife, I got selected for this thing. And she's like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? You're going to another country for a week? The week before Christmas? And I said, I have to, I have to go. This is like the opportunity of a lifetime. It was an amazing experience. They flew us there. We had a stopover in England. They flew us to Jordan. We did those, those three troops in one day. Ending up with getting to see the movie like a week early at the big premiere in Jordan, in, in, in Amman, Jordan. Got to go to the children's hospital, the, uh, the mall. And then they wanted to thank us and they said, we're going to take you out to the desert uh, tomorrow, the day after, to do a photo shoot in the Wadi Rum Desert, which is right outside of Jordan, where they filmed The Rise of Skywalker. If you've seen The Rise of Skywalker, those beginning scenes in the desert, with those very stark rocks. It was actually the same desert used in the new movie, Dune. It's this, the same desert. It's this bleak desert with big mountains and big, interesting rock structures. They had us go out there, suit up, and they, they took all pictures right at the same spots where they filmed the movie. So it was like a geek stream come true. It was absolutely the most incredible experience of my life. So I always, I always say that, that, that I don't really believe in any higher power or anything like that, but I do believe that there is some kind of universal karma in the, in the universe. Because I think if you do a lot of good within your life and you're giving back and you're always trying trying to do something good for other people, there is like a karma in the world and good things come to you. And that was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. And I credit it to being part of this organization and, and being part of something so good that they the people in, uh, halfway around the world saw that and wanted to have our group come and visit a children's hospital in, in Jordan. So it, it was an incredible experience. And, uh, and what happened to your armor? Well, that was the armor that I said that <laughs> got all cracked in the transport on the plane. I cracked off part of the shoulder piece. Uh, one of the arms was broken in half. The leg was ripped, ripped down the side. We managed to patch it up and get through that event and do the photo shoot. And I was just like, I, I was so overwhelmed with the generosity of the folks there and how nice they treated us and everything. I said, you know, I'm just gonna leave you the suit. I said, I already have another backup one I'm working on at home that I'll have ready in the next two or three weeks. And they said they had a little film department there. They said they were gonna put it on a mannequin and, and display it there, you know, kind of commemorate us coming. So I did end up leaving it there and, I, and this is the suit that I built right after that that I've been using for the past uh, three or four years. Oh. Yeah, mess man. <laughs> How does the moon work? How does the what? The moon. The moon work. The, they're not going to tell us about the moon love. But I you don't know anything about the moon. I don't but, know anything about the moon. I know about the Death Star. <laughs> you about you about had a question. Star. You asked why Darth Vader has two helmets earlier. Do you want to ask him that? Why he has two helmets? Why do I have two helmets? The reason I have multiple helmets is because I've been upgrading it over the years to be more and more accurate to what was actually in the movie. See, my first one was made by a guy who just made a sculpt based upon photographs, and he made the molds and casts from that. My next one 
the guy had gotten his hands briefly on a real helmet and took really, really good pitches. And he made a mold and made the cast from that. Meanwhile, this one, uh, Lucasfilm had a, a guy going around the country called Kermit Elmer. And it's a funny name, huh? And he used a real screen used helmets. After a few years, that suit got worn out. So then they made a new one, and they used a stunt helmet from Return of the Jedi. I'm a Return of the Jedi Vader, by the way. It was a stunt helmet that they used. Somebody got, they, they call it the 21st century suit. Someone got their hands on that, took real good molds off of that helmet, and that's this helmet. Now, my other helmet was actually a stunt helmet that was used in the movie, actually screen used. And that's my most precious helmet. The only problem is that helmet and shoulder armor combination causes me to choke. It, it doesn't ride right on me. I have to spend some time with somebody and pad it out so it sits right so it doesn't hurt. You should also mention the, the signatures. You got oh, yeah. I got a couple signatures here. You can't really see it anymore because this one is worn out. This was uh, one of the people that played Darth Vader in uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's a very bad, uh, and over here, it's signed by a man named Brian Muir. He's the guy that sculpted the original helmet. I got to meet him. I had the privilege to meet him. I also had the privilege of having dinner with David Prowse, who was Darth Vader in the movies. So, we have, I also have my other helmet, uh, my helmet before this one. I have Carrie Fisher's signature on it, and David Prowse is on that helmet. So we do get to meet some of the celebrities. I've met quite a bit of the cast. I know you do. Oh, yeah. We, we, we were very lucky to meet the yeah. whole cast of The Force Awakens. We got to meet mm -hmm. various folks and, and, like I said, Mark Hamill. And just over the years, you know, we just feel very privileged that we're recognized by Lucasfilm to be so accurate that they'll use us for various promotional events. And, mm -hmm. and again, it's that karma again. I think if you do good things in the world, good things come to you. And, and I think what we do is really the ultimate good a geek can do, <laughs> and still have fun doing it. I mean, we all love doing this, we all are passionate about our costumes, and again, to use that for something good in the community is just, is just an incredible bonus. Can you guys, like, get sweaty in your costumes? Sometimes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> right, right now, they it's they pretty look comfortable. Like they look really hot. Yeah. yeah, they are very hot, they are. Yeah, and in the summer, this can be horrible, and Christina can attest that wearing all black in the summer yeah. is probably not the best idea. <laughs> Feel, just, like just feel the weight of that. Holy cow. <laughs> the, the, the cape weighs 11 pounds. Yeah, you, don't want, you don't want to be around in the summer. We, uh, we did a trip up in Hudson Valley, and it was like 100 degrees that day. And Ron, Ron almost had... Uh, I almost passed out. He almost had heat stroke, because it was yeah. so hot. It was I'm just, he was like, tripping. I thought you guys would be hot during that like, yeah. desert visit. Well, we oh, did. yeah, the, the, oh. the desert visit was actually funny. It was it was in the 50s. It wasn't actually, uh, because it was December, it wasn't actually that hot in the desert. It was actually kind of pleasant and, and comfortable. Wow. Yeah, we had done a trip on Intrepid many, many years ago. This has to be probably nine years ago, at least. Uh, they had all these exhibits set up on the on the on the dock area where the, the intrepid is, and I'm walking along with I don't know if you were one of my stormtroopers. The kids, the uh, yeah, kids I don't know if yeah, I don't know if you were one of the stormtroopers that was with me. I had two stormtroopers with me, and one of them goes, Ron, look, and I look down and I have a red dot on me, and I'm going, oh no no no, we don't have an assassin here <laughs> getting ready to shoot Darth Vader, and all of a sudden I see this guy from NASA waving at me, so we walk over. And he goes, listen, guy, you got to go inside. And I go, boy, what's wrong? He goes, I just shot you with a thermometer, a, a laser thermometer. You, your armor hit off at 120 degrees. <laughs> now, I felt great. As soon as he said that, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I took the helmet off, and, the, and the, the water just pours out. But yeah, it does get hot. It really weighs a couple of pounds. Like yeah. Biker Scout one is fiberglass and right. it's a little heavier on your head. It's like wearing a bowling ball on your head. Like right. crazy. My it whole is. my whole armor, the whole setup is 70 pounds. So it's it's heavy and it it does it's constricting. I mean, full full leather, head to toe almost. 
the tape is heavy, everything is heavy. Well, we'll wrap it up, and let yep. me just say thank you, everybody, for listening and, and, and paying attention and asking some, some really great questions. If you're interested in the 501st in general, you can check out 501st.com. If you want to check out the New York area, we have a calendar with all the events we have coming up at 501ecg.com. And some of the events coming up we have are very exciting. Uh, next weekend will be at Roosevelt Field for Down Syndrome Day, which is great. We're going to be there from, I think, 2 to 4 o'clock, right by Macy's. And there's going to be a whole bunch of us there. It's a great event uh, to raise awareness for Down Syndrome and, and people helping people with Down Syndrome. Uh, and then May 4th, we're going to be at the Yankee game for Yankee Star Wars Night. And that's one of our favorite troops of every year. It's, it's, it's an incredibly exciting troop. We get to walk on the field. Uh, we get to be on TV. It's a, it's a great event to help promote Star Wars and, and the Yankees, and it's something that we, we look forward to every year. And various other events we have. Check out our calendar. We're doing a free event right in this area in Levittown, at Levittown Hall on July 20th called our Minicon. It's the sci-fi Minicon that we do on behalf of the Cerebral Palsy Foundation. And if you'd like to check that out, it's a free event. It's from 12 to 5. It's, uh, again, July 20th. And we'll have our trash compactor set that we built that looks just like the trash compactor from the movie. We'll have about a dozen characters. We'll have the Ghostbusters there. We'll have the uh, Saber Field there, which is another group that does Jedi demonstrations. It's going to be a great event, and it's all to raise money for a local charity. So please check that out if you can. Any other questions, anybody? Go. What was that? Absolutely. We'll get our helmets on. You want to take some pictures oh, yeah, up pictures here? Of course. Oh, absolutely. Take some pictures.